On September 1st, 1939, at 4.40am, Germany invaded Poland, marking the outbreak of World War II. The German Luftwaffe initiated the attack by bombing the border city of Wielen, where 70% of the buildings were destroyed or damaged. This sudden assault resulted in approximately 1,200 deaths, mostly among civilians. Simultaneously, the German battleship SMS Schleswig-Holstein fired upon the Polish stronghold at Westerplatte. The ship had been stationed in the port of Gdansk under the pretense of a diplomatic visit. The artillery fire from SMS Schleswig-Holstein is considered the first shot of World War II, symbolizing the beginning of the war. At 4.45 a.m., German forces launched a full-scale attack on Poland from the south, north and west. Germany deployed three army corps to attack Poland, the army group south and army group north in the east, and the army group C in the west. The army group south, commanded by General Rundstedt as the overall army group commander, and General Manstein as the chief of staff, consisted of the 8th, 10th, and 14th German army corps, along with the Slovak army Bernalak. Additionally, the army group south comprised approximately 40 division-level units totaling around 880,000 personnel, including 10 divisions designated as rapid mobile forces, namely armored and motorized infantry divisions. Germany's puppet state, Slovakia, also contributed three infantry divisions and one motorized corps to form the Army Bernalak. The Army Group South received air support from General Alexander Lure's Luftflotte IV, which had 729 aircraft. Furthermore, the 22nd Army and 7th Army totaling five infantry divisions, served as the reserve of the Army Group South. In the Army Group North, General Bach served as the overall Army Group commander, with General Salmuth as the chief of staff. The Army Group North consisted of the 3rd and 4th German Army Corps. The reserve of the Army Group North included three infantry divisions and an understrength 10th Panzer Division. General Kesselring's Luftflotte I provided air support to the Army Group North with 1,105 aircraft. The Army Group North comprised over 20 division-level units, including five divisions designated as Rapid Mobile Forces. The total strength of the Army Group North was approximately 600,000 personnel. In the Western region, the Army Group C, commanded by General Lieb, was responsible for defending the German Western Front. These forces were mostly reservists and lacked sufficient manpower. Most infantry units were without heavy weapons, and the soldiers' means of transportation were limited to horses and bicycles. According to General Franz Halder, the chief of the general staff of the German army, these forces were only capable of performing minor customs duties. Now let's examine the situation of the Polish military at the outbreak of the war. The Polish army had approximately six army corps. The Modlin Army, Carpathian Army, Krakow Army, Wodz Army, Poznan Army, Pomorze Army, and Group Nauru. The Polish army consisted of 30 infantry divisions, 14 cavalry brigades, and 11 territorial defense units, totaling around 1.35 million personnel. At the start of the war, only 1 million Polish soldiers had completed mobilization, as a significant portion of the military was still in the process of assembling. The German military enjoyed significant advantages in terms of the quantity and quality of their weapons and equipment. A German infantry division was equipped with 735 light machine guns while the Polish army had only 326. On average, a German infantry division had 1,009 cars and 4,842 horses, whereas a Polish infantry division had only 76 cars, but significantly more horses, numbering 6,939. The German military deployed 2,695 aircraft, including 1179 fighters, 4,336 dive bombers, and 1,180 bombers. In contrast, the Polish Air Force had just over 500 operational aircraft. Furthermore, the German army possessed seven panzer divisions, four light mechanized divisions, and four motorized infantry divisions, collectively known as rapid forces. Germany had over 2,700 tanks, with half of them being Panzer I and Panzer II tanks. 
The Panzer I was a small tank equipped with only two machine guns and had thin armor ranging from 7 to 13 millimeters, making it vulnerable. However, Poland's TKS tank was even more diminutive, with armor ranging from 4 to 10 millimeters and only one machine gun. Poland had slightly over 500 TKS tanks, which were their only available armored assets. Some TKS tanks were modified with a 20 millimeter anti-tank gun, capable of destroying the German Panzer I. However, Poland had only 24 of these upgraded TKS tanks, which posed no significant threat to the German Panzer divisions. The firepower of the German Panzer II surpassed that of the Panzer I, as it was equipped with a 20 millimeter gun and had armor ranging from 5 to 15 millimeters. The Polish TKS tanks were defenseless against the German Panzer II. The mainstay of the German armored units was the Panzer III and Panzer IV, which possessed superior firepower, armor protection, and mobility. Although the German army had only 295 of these tanks, accounting for less than 10% of their total tank force, they were formidable against the Polish forces. Germany also supplemented their panzer divisions with Czech-produced La 35 and Le 38 tanks to compensate for the scarcity of Panzer III and Panzer IV. We shift our focus to the north, where the German 4th Army is stationed on the western border of the Danzig Corridor. General Klug commands the army, which consists of three corps and a corps reserve. The second army is, comprises two fully equipped infantry divisions, while the third army assists of one full infantry division and two border guard regiments. Of particular note is the 19th Army, led by General Guderian. He commands in Panzer Division and two motorized divisions. The famous 3rd Panzer Division, led by General Schweppenberg. Among the tanks in the 3rd Panzer Division during the Polish campaign are 122 Panzer I tanks, 176 Panzer II tanks, 43 Panzer III tanks, and 32 Panzer IV tanks, totaling 391 tanks. According to the German organization, in Panzer Division typically has two tank regiments and, in full strength, would possess 561 tanks. However, none of the German Panzer divisions during the Polish campaign reached this full strength, with each division equipped with approximately 300 tanks. Additionally, the 19th Army has two motorized divisions. Guderian's 19th Army represents the corps and elite forces of the German Army Group North. The corps' reserve of the 4th Army consists of three infantry divisions and two light border defense units. The operational plan of the 4th Army involves attacking the Polish Pomorze Army and capturing the Danzig Corridor. The Danzig Corridor region at that time had extensive forests, particularly the dense and complex terrain of the Tuhola Forest in the central part. The Polish military believed this natural barrier would make it difficult for the German armored forces to advance. However, many senior German generals had lived in the Danzig Corridor region during their youth, as it belonged to Germany before World War I. Therefore, they were familiar with the terrain. General Guderian himself was born near Kolm in this area. On the early morning of September 1st, 1939, General Guderian's 19th Army launched an attack crossing the border and invading Poland. Guderian personally commanded the 3rd Panzer Division to rapidly advance into Polish. Soon the German forces encountered Polish troops near Strzelce Krajenski, resulting in a small-scale skirmish where 10 German soldiers were killed. Due to the limited scale of the engagement and poor visibility caused by heavy fog, General Guderian ordered his subordinates not to open fire indiscriminately. However, the 75th Artillery Regiment of the 3rd Panzer Division could not resist and fired intensely into the fog. Two shells landed near General Guderian's half-track command vehicle, causing it to overturn into a ditch. Fortunately, Guderian and his staff were unharmed. After this minor incident, Guderian ordered his forces to swiftly move towards the Burda River. The Polish 9th Infantry Division obstructed the German advance along the Burda River, defending a 70-kilometer-long sector between Prusch and Gostaisin. The Polish defense positions were severely threatened by the attack of Guderian's 3rd Panzer Division. The Polish command ordered the 27th Infantry Division to reinforce the 9th Infantry Division, and stopped the Germans from crossing the western bank of the Brda River. Around 6 p.m. that evening, General Guderian personally led his troops in crossing the Brda River and attacking the Polish defensive line. By that night, the 3rd Panzer Division had reached the Suikator area, having breached the Polish defense line. 
On the early morning of September 2nd, the Polish 9th Infantry Division retreated their forces from the central sector of the defensive line to the eastern bank of the Burda River, regrouping near Bislawek to establish a new defense. Guderian's other two motorized divisions also launched attacks against the Polish positions, with the 2nd Motorized Division progressing slowly and remaining near the border. The 20th Motorized Division was halted in Czoznice due to the resistance of the Polish Pomorze Army's 18th Pomeranian Ulans Regiment. Although the scale of this conflict was small, it is worth mentioning. On September 1st, the 18th Pomeranian Ulans Regiment discovered a group of resting German infantry near Krojanti, north of Czoznice. Colonel Kazimierz Mastalet, the commander of the cavalry regiment, decided to launch a surprise attack on the Germans. He ordered two cavalry squadrons, consisting of approximately 250 cavalrymen, to charge the German positions at dusk. The charge was successful, dispersing the German soldiers, and the Polish troops regained control of the area. However, shortly after, German armored reconnaissance vehicles from the 20th Motorized Division appeared, and their machine guns fired at the Polish cavalry, forcing Colonel Mastalers to order an immediate retreat into the forest. During the retreat, Colonel Mastalers was tragically killed by machine gun fire from the German troops. In this battle, 11 German soldiers were killed, and around 20 Polish cavalrymen were killed, with over 40 wounded. German and Italian war correspondents, for the sake of propaganda, fabricated stories of Polish cavalry charging German tanks armed only with swords and lances. Obviously, these rumors did not reflect reality. In fact, the 18th Pomeranian Uhlans Regiment had a detachment equipped with TKS tanks, but they were not present on the battlefield at the time. Otherwise, they could have repelled the German armored vehicle attack. After this battle, the Polish Chersk Operational Group began retreating southeast. On the morning of September 2nd, at 5 o'clock, the reconnaissance battalion of the 19th Army Corps had already reached the western bank of the Vistula River. After a day of rapid marching, the 3rd Panzer Division's ammunition and fuel were severely depleted, forcing General Guderian to halt their advance. Meanwhile, the Polish forces launched a counterattack and the German 23rd Infantry Division, as the reserve of the 4th Army crops, prepared to reinforce Guderian. This infantry division faced a difficult task of catching up with Guderian's armored units, but before the 23rd Infantry Division could arrive, Guderian had already repelled the Polish counterattack. Afterwards, the replenished 3rd Panzer Division swiftly advanced towards the western bank of the Vistula River. Along the way, Guderian's armored units caught up with a Polish artillery regiment, which fired only two shots before being completely annihilated by the German troops. Subsequently, the 3rd Panzer Division successfully reached the western bank of the Vistula River. Guderian's Panzer Division acted like a swift blade, effectively severing the Danzig Corridor. This confirmed Guderian's famous quote that armored units do not need flanks, as speed is their best flank. On the same day, after the 2nd Motorized Division of Guderian defeated the Polish 35th Infantry Regiment of the 9th Infantry Division in the vicinity of Tukola, the German 32nd Infantry Division of the 2nd Army defeated the Polish 22nd Infantry Regiment of the 9th Infantry Division from the south. As a result, the Polish 9th Infantry Division was completely defeated. The Polish forces retreated from the Burda River front to the forests near Echin. The southernmost 22nd Infantry Regiment of the 9th Infantry Division broke away from the main force and retreated south to the positions of the Polish 15th Infantry Division. The Polish 15th Infantry Division was stationed between Nakalov and Bydgoszcz, establishing a 30-kilometer-long defensive line in that area. The strategic objective of this division was to defend the southern region of the Danzig Corridor. The Polish 15th Infantry Division relied on these defensive fortifications to successfully withstand the attacks of the German 3rd Army on September 1st and 2nd. The Polish 15th Infantry Division consisted of three brigades, totaling six regiments, and with the addition of the 22nd Infantry Regiment, it had a total of seven regiments. The German 3rd Army consisted of one division and one brigade, also comprising six regiments 
making the forces of the German 3rd Army and the Polish 15th Infantry Division roughly equal in size, with both sides primarily consisting of infantry. The German 23rd Infantry Division continuously pursued Guderian's armoured units, while also coordinating with the armoured forces to engage the Polish troops in the southern part of the Tukola Forest. The retreat route of the Polish Pomorzy Army in the southeast was completely blocked by the German forces. In this critical situation, General Bortnowski, the commander of the Pomorzy Army, decided to concentrate all available forces, except for the southernmost 15th Infantry Division, to regroup with the 9th Infantry Division and establish a defensive position in the Tukyola Forest. By the early morning of September 3rd, the Chersk Operational Group had joined forces with the 9th Infantry Division, while the Polish 27th Infantry Division had not yet arrived. The combined strength of the Chersk Operational Group was roughly equivalent to one and a half divisions. General Bortnowski of the Pomorza Army decided to use all available forces assembled here to launch a decisive battle against the German troops, with the aim of forcing them back to the western bank of the Breda River. Guderian's 3rd Panzer Division continued its advance along the Vistula River towards Grudziat. On the same day, after more than a day of marching, Guderian's 20th Motorized Division crossed the central part of the Tuchula Forest along the chojnice lubichovo line, cutting through the Danzig Corridor, and established a defensive line in the northern part of the Modlin Army. At the same time, Guderian's 2nd Motorized Division pressed forward from the west, gradually encircling the Polish forces. The last major counterattack by the Polish 9th Infantry Division failed to achieve its objective. After this failed offensive... The Polish 9th Infantry Division, 27th Infantry Division, and the Chersk Operational Group, among other units, were all trapped within the Tokola Forest, facing the danger of being annihilated. In the southern part of the Danzig Corridor, with the support of the Luftwaffe, the German 3rd Army launched a fierce attack against the Polish 15th Infantry Division, breaking through their defensive line after two days of resistance. The Polish military ordered the 15th Infantry Division to retreat toward Turun. At this point, the surrounded Polish forces in the Tuchola Forest had utterly lost all external support. Some may wonder about the presence of the Polish 16th and 4th Infantry Divisions on the eastern bank of the Vistula River. At the beginning of the war, the German 21st Army of the East Prussian 3rd Army threatened these two infantry divisions. Therefore, the infantry divisions on the eastern bank of the Vistula River had no capacity to assist in the western region. The Polish forces trapped in the Tuchola forest were surrounded by German troops on all sides and subjected to relentless bombardment from the German Luftwaffe. The 9th Infantry Division, 27th Infantry Division, and the Chersk Operational Group, among others, were dispersed. And within two days, they faced near total destruction. With only one regiment the 35th Infantry Regiment of the 9th Infantry Division, managing to break out of the German encirclement on September 5th. In this encirclement battle, the German forces suffered only 150 casualties, while around 700 were wounded. The German offensive against the Polish forces effectively utilized the mobility of Panzer Divisions and, with the support of the Air Force, swiftly defeated the Polish forces which were equipped with outdated weaponry and tactics, showcasing the power of Blitzkrieg warfare. This is the History and Weapons Channel. Please subscribe to this channel. Your support is invaluable to me.